Sean White is one of the most prolific snowboarders in history, winning three Olympic gold medals throughout his career. However, now it seems like his shining career is coming to an end soon, and he has made an announcement that has shocked fans all across the world. It's the first of many shocking revelations that we've seen throughout the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, which is why in this video we'll be taking a look at Sean White's announcement. But first, a reminder about our brand new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro, the choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. First, Sean White makes an announcement. On February 5th, 2022, before playing for Team USA in the 2022 Beijing Olympics, Sean White announced that this edition of the Winter Olympics is going to be quite special to him because it'll be his last. He said that following the conclusion of this event, he will retire from competitive snowboarding. However, he didn't exactly say he was done from snowboarding for good. The man who pretty much became the face of snowboarding in America said that there was a lot more to the sport than just the Olympics or other competitions. He added that there's still a life to be had in the sport outside of just competitions. There are so many elite snowboarders that never really make it to the Olympics, the X Games, or other events like that. He says that he will continue to snowboard, but as a hobby, not a career. It does make sense that White decided to retire now. After all, he has, over the course of his career, amassed a net worth of over $60 million. He doesn't have to work a single day for the rest of his life. Sean White will certainly be missed by his many fans, but it's great to see him focus on the next chapter of his life. Next, problems keep arising for Olympic athletes. While China promised that the 2022 Beijing Olympics would be extremely safe with the athletes' well-being kept as a top priority, the actual athletes present at the Games paint a different picture of the whole event. During skiing events, the minimum temperature where it is allowed for athletes to ski is negative 20 degrees Celsius. Any lower than that, and the event is canceled. While the temperature didn't really go below negative 13 degrees, the organizers failed to take wind chill into account before starting the Games. The temperature, with wind chill, was an estimated negative 35 degrees Celsius, which is cold enough for any athlete to give up. Swedish players constantly complained of the cold, with skier Frida Carlson being near unable to move because of how cold it was. Keep in mind, these Swedes are from a cold country themselves, and if they are complaining about it being cold, you know something is not right. Next up, Natalia Malashevska, Isolation Ward Debacle. The Olympic authorities are being extremely careful with the COVID situation during the event, but it has led to a lot of confusion among the athletes, with some saying they're being too careful. There's no better example of this than Polish short track speed skater Natalia Malashevska. She was one of the favorites to win at least one medal at the women's 500 meter race. But on January 30th, just a few days before the race, she tested positive for COVID-19. She was placed inside of an isolation ward and she would be allowed to compete only if she showed no symptoms and tested negative for COVID twice before it happened. But right before the 500 meter race actually began, Natalia Malievska was unexpectedly released from the isolation ward, giving her hope that she would be able to compete again. This happened because she apparently tested negative twice. But mere hours before the race began, she once again tested positive for COVID and was banned from the competition. Natalia Malievska was justifiably devastated by the decision. She said she didn't know what to believe, her positive tests or her negative tests. She said that she has been living in constant fear for over a week, with no one to accompany her. She was unpacking her things to get ready to leave for the competition when she was eventually told the news, crushing her. Next, New Zealand bags first ever gold. New Zealand has had a lot of Olympic success in the past, winning a total of 53 gold medals at the Summer Olympics, despite being a small nation with only 5 million people. However, New Zealand has never actually won a gold medal in the Winter Olympics. Prior to this event, New Zealand had only won one silver and two bronze medals at the Winter Games, but history was set to change this year. On the second full day of the 2022 Beijing Olympics, a total of seven gold medals were up for grabs. One of the athletes competing was 20-year-old Zoe sadovsky sanat a snowboarder from New Zealand. During the women's slope-style event, Sanat breezed through the competition and won the first-ever gold for New Zealand at a Winter Olympics event. She said the win makes her super proud to be a Kiwi. She had trained day in and day out during New Zealand's strict COVID lockdowns for the past two years with only one goal, winning a gold medal for her country. It seems like all that hard work finally came into fruition. New Zealand has sent a total of 
15 athletes to the game this year, an impressive number when you factor in New Zealand's size. With nine of these athletes being in freestyle skiing alone, the Kiwis still have a chance of bagging a few more medals throughout the games. Up next, Beijing Olympics are carbon neutral. Over the past few editions of both the Summer and the Winter Olympics, many concerns have been raised by environmentalist groups over the environmental impact that these games have, as well as the massive costs associated with hosting these games. But some of these problems are being addressed in the Beijing Games. Reportedly, this Olympics would only cost around $3.9 billion, down from the $12 billion of the Pyeongchang Olympics or the $50 billion of the Sochi Olympics. On top of that, China claims that these are the first Olympic Games to be carbon neutral. They did this by reusing a lot of infrastructure that was left over from the 2008 Beijing Olympics, limiting the number of spectators that can view the Games, and by using only renewable and green sources of electricity throughout the Games. As a result, these Games will not have any impact on the environment at all. Considering how controversial these Games are, this is certainly a step in the right direction for Olympic Games in general. However, there are also some reports that claim the real cost of these Games is over 10 times higher than China claims they are. We'll have to take these reports with a grain of salt, but it's clear that no one here is telling the complete truth. Next, Brianna Decker ruled out for the Games. Although Team USA is one of the favorites to win the Olympic gold in this year's ice hockey games, one of the top players in the female team might not make it to the Games after all. Brianna Decker was part of the team that led Team USA to victory at the 2018 Winter Olympics, and she played a huge role in that victory. People were excited to see her and the team once again this year, but unfortunately for them, that might not be the case. After the first game, which saw her team win against Finland 5-2, Brianna suffered a knee injury during the first half of the game. She did not return throughout the rest of the game and was seen walking around in crutches. Shortly after the game, it was announced that Decker was not going to compete in any of the matches moving forward. It wasn't clear exactly what kind of injury she had, but if it was bad enough for her to miss the Olympics of all games, it was probably pretty bad. It'll be interesting to see if she'll ever return to the games. And as of Team USA, they just lost one of the best members of their team. Are the Olympic Games a failure? With all the controversies surrounding the Beijing Olympics, many people are going so far as to call the entire event a failure. All of this started with the diplomatic boycott of the Games, with many countries, including the United States, Canada, Australia, and the United Kingdom, refusing to send their diplomats or heads of state to attend the Games. However, all of these nations still sent their athletes to the Games, so it wasn't really a full-blown boycott. But even when you take the boycott out of the equation, there are a lot of issues with these Olympics. The costs, allegedly, have been inflated beyond the point where the government initially expected, and at this point, it'll be near impossible for them to recover the costs because of the strict attendance limitations that were placed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Athlete welfare is also a point that many critics are bringing up when it comes to these games. Overall, it's hard to call the games a failure, but the rise has certainly not been as smooth and successful as the Chinese government was hoping it would be. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the U.S. snowboarding team will ever see another player like Sean White? Let us know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!